with the Mercedes Ellington that I know now is a griot. Griot is a term that we borrow from Francophone West Africa. The griot in African society is the individual who is responsible for the oral history of the community, the society, the nation, the culture. The griot is a living library. That's what Mercedes Ellington is. She's a living library, not only because she carries the legacy of Duke Ellington, not only because she pioneered the way for black women in entertainment, but also because she has founded the Duke Ellington Center for the Arts. The relationship between Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn has gone from pillar to post. Everybody has a different opinion as to what it was. Everybody has their theories. And then there are the people who actually were there at the time who noticed and who, at least for when they were together in rehearsal situation, but when they were together composing, nobody was there. You know, so everybody's saying, oh, Billy was the one who wrote all that music. Duke Ellington didn't have anything to do with it. Or Duke Ellington wrote that, and Billy Strayhorn didn't. When he came, he was coming from his family's shunning him. Right. And he knew he came with A train, take the A train underneath his armpit. And he knew he wanted to go to Ellington, and he wanted to collaborate with him. And so everybody said, oh, no, Duke Ellington did not write Take the A Train. Well, no, but you have to know that arrangers have a lot to do with the end up composition of a song. Right. So Duke Ellington helped him arrange it. They made an arrangement together. So they keep saying, yes, they wrote, take the A train. Or as Lawrence Welk called it, take a train. The men in your family were gone. Yes, yes. Okay. Except for the fact that when the band who toured most of the time then Your grandfather's my, my grandfather's band, I knew they were touring. Sometimes I would look at the papers, especially if my grandmother got the Amsterdam News, which was also called the Black Dispatch, <laughs> that you got all of the news pertaining to people of color in that every little thing, whether it was social or crime or whatever, it was always in that paper. Mm -hmm. And I kept track of where they were, if they were, if and when they came to New York and most of their uh, gigs were at the either the Apollo in Harlem or the um, uh, downtown at the Rainbow Rainbow Room, and there were also jazz clubs at that point on Fifty Seventh Street was Copic full. Cabana. There was the the Blue Note, Birdland, Old Birdland and many, many other jazz clubs that were there, and the band used to play there. And my grandmother would take me to the Apollo. Uh, she would sit me down in the middle of the audience, and the band leaders, and the band members, their wives would keep track of where I was and sit with me and take care of me, and, and we would go backstage because the fair at the Apollo at the time was a movie and a show and a movie and a show and a movie and a show. And I was in heaven. I wanted, I didn't care how many times I saw the same movie. I was just, you know, looking at the show and then looking at the movie. But then every once in a while, the, um, the band members' wives would come and get me and bring me backstage and share their meals because they would have fried chicken. And that was my <laughs> favorite, was fried chicken. I was not a good eater, mm -hmm. but fried chicken you could give me any day.